Do you hear that alarm? I do. <laughs> okay. You know what that means. It's question bomb time. Stephanie, are you ready? I think so, yes. <laughs> I'm. Are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. for coming on the Uniweb interview show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm doing wonderful. Thing. It's early this morning. Um, I know, well, it's it's about 8 o'clock a.m. where I am. Are you, are you in America? Yes, I am. You are in America. Are you in the Western Hemisphere or the Eastern Hemisphere? <laughs> Um, not Western. I'm on Eastern. You're on Eastern. Okay, so we're around the same time. Yes. Well, I'm very excited you're on the show today. Um, before we before we came on, I was explaining to you kind of the format and what we're going to be doing. So, if you're new to the show, the Uniweb show, um, we're going to be playing. We're going to be having a conversation, and at any time during the conversation, we could be interrupted by an alarm. When that alarm goes off. We drop right into different question bombs. These question bombs are completely random. I mean, I pick them, so they're not super. They're not completely random. Right. <laughs> I made them up, but I like to believe I'm completely random. So they they will be coming up. Uh, I have a, have an alarm set that only I know. Stephanie has no idea what's going on. <laughs> She's completely in the dark here. <laughs> She's gonna be put on the spot. But I believe she can do it, and I am excited to get started. So, Stephanie, let's talk about and – the, and it's, the alarm starts now. So, Stephanie, let's talk about this book, Our Greatest Sin is the Lack of Expression. Mm -hmm. How did this come about for you? Um, it's been in the works for a long time, but um, the reason it came about is because I had uh, quit writing for a while, and I had uh, a son – I had my son in uh, – we had to start a speech therapy form. Okay. And they told me that, you know, the best way for him to learn is to rhythm either poetry or music. So we started at home making up, uh, making up rhythms and sounds and stuff. And it kind of took me back to writing. But um, it's funny. It also made me realize how important it is for us to express ourselves and be open no matter kind of how weird or quirky it is. Yeah. And uh, ended up leading to writing this book. And so is this a book of poems? Like, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, how long did it take you to write? I mean, is this, have, you, have you always been writing? Or was this a book of a collection of things that you've written in the past? Or... Um. The early, some of the poems are. Looks like I lost. Hold on. I'm back. Yeah, you're back. Okay. Go ahead. Um, some of them are written as early as when I was 12. And wow. some of them were written in the last two years when I really started putting the book together, which was two years ago. Wow. Are, did you, okay, so the poems that you wrote when you were 12 years old, did you clean them up at all, or were they, like, were they ready to rock? Were you, like, oh, a, no. were you a dope <laughs> poetist <laughs> as a 12-year-old? No, no, the, the heart, the hardship ones are from when I was a kid, the ones in the beginning of the book are later on. <laughs> okay, so it, uh, poetry, poetry, um, it's it's hard to define for me because it can take a lot of different forms, mm -hmm. right? And I think you can you can write poetically without it being a poem. But like, what what's your and there's many different forms of of it, I suppose, as well, right? So, what is your your uh, clearest expression of a poem? Is it like are you writing a lot of high Haikus or soliloquies or like what? 
because it's it's something that's for me hard to define. It is entirely hard to define, and I agree on that because um, everybody has a different perception of it. For me, mine is more um, freestyle poetic. Like, I don't follow a format, but to me, poetry or a poem or anything that's poetic has a lot of honesty to it. Yeah. And that's how I define it is that's when you can be the most honest with yourself and how you feel. Okay. In a very poetic way. So it's got a certain authenticity to it. Yes. Now, were, were a lot of these poems, I know you said, uh, started with your... Um, with your son having to go to speech therapy. Uh, poetry a lot of times takes on the form of, of pain, immense pain, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, because that emotion for pain is so hard to express. Is that something you feel like a lot of the poetry became? Something that was like, um, this is all about pain or, sorry, I'm turning this my notification down here. Is this, was it all about pain or was there a lot of like love involved? What, what was your most common theme that you found? Um, well, a lot of the stuff in this book I don't have that's written on my son. It's written about some other stuff. But for me, I think it's a combination of um, pain, figuring out who you are as you're going through all of that type of pain as you're expressing it. Yeah. Because oftentimes we can't express that type of stuff. Just having a conversation with a person is something that we express within ourselves alone when nobody else is around. Yeah. And with that too, like, so I've, I've written a couple of different poems, um, but it's never been like something I've redrafted. I've never gone back and edited it or anything mm -hmm. like that. And a lot, I mean, with, with writing books and, and, you know, going to this realm of publishing, there's the, the whole editing side and, and taking what you've done, your form that you've created and turning it into or molding it into something else like how much how do you go about editing your poetry i'll be perfectly honest when it, it when it goes comes to editing for me oftentimes i have to walk away from something i've i've written and i'll wait a long while before i go back and look over it because then i'm gonna have more of a clear head about how i want it to go do you hear that alarm i do <laughs> okay you know what that means? It's question bomb time. Stephanie, are you ready? I think so, yes. <laughs> I'm so, are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Do you have your do you have your uh, paper and pen? I do. I'm so glad we're talking about poetry. And we'll get back to what you're talking about in a second. This is called Write Me a Poem, Stephanie. We have 30 seconds to write a poem for one another. Are you killing me? <laughs> Are you ready um, for this? Okay. I'm, right, I'm as ready as I'm going to get, I think. Okay, ready? Set. Poem. Does it have to rhyme? No. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Five seconds. Okay, done. Time. Oh my goodness. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay. Are you ready to perform your poetry? Oh my goodness, this is horrible, but I mean, it's the only thing I could think of from today. Yeah, I think okay. so. Do <laughs> you want to go first? Uh, I guess so. This is going to be bad, though, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Good. That's what we love, love here on Uniweb, is bad nonsense let's hear it i'm excited 
<laughs> okay. Um, this is called No Mommy. No Mommy. <laughs> Wow, you even titled it. Oh my god, okay. That's good. <laughs> no, mommy, I can't listen. No, mommy, I don't have attention. No, mommy, I don't want to do what you ask. No, mommy, I can't, I, I can't go to school. No, mommy, I can't hate you, but no, mommy, I can't listen. I can't love you either when you're mad. Oh, this is horrible. No, keep going. Keep going. This is great stuff. I can't believe you just wrote this. This is amazing. <laughs> this is what art is. It's raw. Come on. Um, no, me, no, mommy, I can't help it. Yes, mommy, I have to cry. Yes, mommy, I have to disobey. Yes, mommy, I have to ruffle your feathers. But no, mommy, I don't hate you. At the end of the day, mommy, I just have to be me. Wow. That's horrible for me. (laughs) You wrote that in 30 seconds? Yeah. That's amazing. (laughs) Mine doesn't... That was really, really cool, Stephanie. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was awesome. Um, (laughs) Mine is terrible. (laughs) Okay. Come on, let's hear it. You ready for this? I can't believe you got that out in 30 seconds. This one doesn't have a title. <clears throat> Roses are red, <laughs> violets are blue. Look at this place, it's full of me and you. Interview galore. What more? That's as fast as that's as much as I could get in 30 seconds, I swear. That's not bad. That's really good. <laughs> Mine just, I thought was horrible. You're just saying that. You're just saying that because you don't want me to edit the mess out of this. <laughs> hey, I've heard way worse. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm no Dr. Seuss. That's for sure. That guy. He was a real poet. Okay, so thank you so much for playing along. That was called Write Me a Poem. That was tough. Oh, You know, here's the thing. People don't understand how tough art is. It's like, yeah, you can write. Any People can write. It's a basic skill that we learn people can draw it's a basic skill that we learn but to like write meaningfully and write well and draw something or like do any kind of art well that is like people people don't understand how difficult that is and it's not like just anybody can do it so kudos to you because that was really amazing thank you made me want to (laughs) cry is that what you were trying to do no Okay. <laughs> I'd have to work harder to be successful on that. <laughs> you what? I'd have to work a little harder to be successful on that. <laughs> You're close. There's a lot of meaning there. I could feel it. All right. So you were talking about editing editing your poetry. Back to, to, to regular conversation. You were talking about editing your poetry, right? Mm-hmm. So when it comes to you editing your poetry, you said it was it was something that you would just have to take a step away from? For a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, would you let other people read it? I'll be perfectly honest. Well, at least there are probably only three people completely that have ever read anything I wrote before this book. Wow. So a lot of people had never read it before until recently. Yeah. How did, um, it, how did it feel when you had other people read it for the first time? nerve-wracking because it wasn't something ever shared (laughs) yeah yeah it's like putting your heart out there right very much so and one of the two of the people that um had read my stuff especially early on um before anybody really knew that i wrote um i had acknowledged in my book because they were my two best friends and they know me better than anybody else, unfortunately, and we don't want them telling any stories on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. They have all the dirt. Um, <laughs> and they only read any of my stuff because sometimes as friends, when you're going through stuff, you know, you share things with them. And both of them at one point in time, you know, I'd seen them at their worst and I would come up with something that I wrote for them. And that's kind of how they started reading my writings is because... 
I shared a piece with each of them that represented who they were and they liked it. Wow. So what kind of um, changes do you feel like, what kind of changes did you have to make to what you wrote? Did you make changes or was this something that? Um, I made a, a lot of changes in the book. Um, from the way some of the stuff flowed and how I wanted it to go. Yeah. Um, which I think I made a thousand changes before I actually clicked the button publish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scary button, isn't it? It's very intimidating. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. Um, but it, it's it's so it's unique. I feel like writing any type of poetry, a, a, po a book about poetry, a bo or a book of poetry, I should say, um, because it's it's all like a subjective or uh, objective way of, of viewing something because it's writing it had a specific meaning to you, but to somebody else it could mean something totally different. So having to find the right mixture of like changing what needs to be changed but not altering the feel of the poem had to be like an extremely difficult, terrifying um, thing. It is, and initially I had to think about the perspective of the book, and that is, um, I didn't want to lose the certain flows as I was editing or reworking the book, but what I did want is I wanted to make sure as I wrote each piece for the book, that it was something everybody could relate to, everybody could understand, and it would be, you know, something for, something in the book for everybody initially. So it's not so steeped in, in deep meaning that other people can't pick it up and be like, oh, I understand what she's trying to, what she's getting at here. There, There's meanings in the book to me that I don't think anybody will quite pick up on, but there are other ways that might have different meanings for other people, I think. Yeah, because it's so personal to you. Mm hmm Talking about your friends are the only ones that know the stuff, the dirt. Kind oh, of deal. lots of dirt. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to write. It's like writing in code. <laughs> it's like you're a wind talker. You're like ta telling all your dirty secrets and poems, and people are like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> Nobody knows. But it's freeing. It must be freeing too, right? There must be a feeling of relief. Yeah, there's a feeling of relief, but there's more nervousness of who's going to be the next one to read the book and what are they going to say about my book? <laughs> well, speaking of which, I, I see, uh, I mean, on your Twitter page, you've got a five-star review. How have the reviews been so far? Um, really well. I mean, I haven't really had anything bad yet. and um, I'm really pleased with what they're saying about it. A lot of people find that they're connecting with something in the book, all of them, or interpreting it in the way that ideally I really wanted the book to be interpreted. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm pretty excited, actually, too. Yeah. Is it has it motivated you to start writing another one, or have you have you already started writing another one? I am already working on the second book. The second book's going to be different because. Um, this first book was just really a trial because I wanted to see how it was going to go, and then I ended up getting excited and working on the second one. The second one is going to have my photography in it and my poetry, and it's going to have both. So it's going to be a little bit different. That's awesome. So what kind of photography do you do? Everything. You I did everything. Hmm? You take pictures of all kinds of stuff, like blocks of wood and tops of people's heads and stuff like that <laughs> stuff like that um yeah. landscape uh kids families i've done weddings um i've done portfolios for um models before and events so you name it i've dabbled in it in one point in time <laughs> how long have you been a photographer i was doing photography since Probably 10 years. Oh, wow. This has been a while. So photography is another thing where, like, anybody can take a picture. But to be a, a good photographer, it's like you have to find, like, joking, jokingly about a block of wood or, like, the top of somebody's head. Like, a good photographer can find lighting 
and a place and that block of wood becomes something totally different. You know, it mm -hmm. becomes like this existential meaning where you're like, oh my God, I've never seen a block of wood like that before. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, how did, do you, do you walk around with a camera and just like look, look for different scenes and have the, these images in your idea? Cause it really is about the, the eye. I have projects that I want to do with it that I haven't gotten around to do yet, but I I look at it completely different than other people, and I, I kind of chuckle a little bit, to be honest, as an artist, because um, I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money, and camera equipment's expensive, so I I often work with natural light, and I work with everything that's around me instead of having... Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Holy crap, that thing scared me. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. You're good. Interrupting your regularly scheduled program, question bomb. This is this is great because we're gonna get to know you a lot better in this in this segment. This is called Lightning Round Questions. Oh boy. So I'm gonna are you ready? These are they're pretty they're simple questions. I literally just want you to answer the question as fast as humanly possible. Okay. First thought, right. Okay. 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 Here we go. Twenty questions lightning round. Oh boy. With Stephanie Holden. In three, two, one. Favorite sound? Oh, goodness. You don't have to write it. Don't write it. No, just answer it. Favorite sound? Favorite sound? Um, buzz. <laughs> favorite person? Um, favorite person? Uh, my son. <laughs> Favorite sport? Uh, football. Favorite food? Uh, pizza. Favorite song? Um, oh, goodness. Killing me. Um, Stuck Like Glue by Sugarland. Beautiful. Favorite movie? Um, The Illusionist. Least favorite sound? Doorbell. <laughs> Least favorite person? Um, <laughs> my last doctor. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's great. I was hoping you weren't going to say me. Least favorite sport? Baseball. Least favorite food? Um, anything healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Least favorite song? Who do you hate? Um... I don't like anything by Rascal Flatts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. Favorite movie, or least favorite movie? Um, um I don't have a clue on that. <laughs> you hate movies. Great. Name of first love? Uh, high school sweetheart? <laughs> Brandon? Yes, Brandon. First words? Um, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Loudest noise you ever heard? A uh, tornado alarm. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Favorite memory? Um, picking on my brother. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're so mean. Okay. <laughs> Shoes? Uh, pumps. <laughs> arm? Arm? Battleship. Attack? <laughs> Country music. Uh, Miranda Lambert. Fishing. Mm, bass. Roller derby? Falling. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream? Uh, scream. <laughs> Beans. Um... I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> They're <Gaffy>. magical. Turtle. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie. Yes. 
Stephanie, that was 20 questions lightning round. You did fantastic. Everyone knows everything about you now. Congratulations. Nice work. Thanks. <laughs> I know that can be tough. A little bit. I know. It's like we we want to think. Think. Just think about it. It's a frightening thought. <laughs> it is frightening thought. <sighs> okay. Now then. So, you were telling me about your photography. <laughs> So easy to get, so easy to get back into the conversation. You're telling me about your photography and how the having camera equipment can be expensive. Yes. Yeah. So, what kind of equipment do you use? Do you have a digital camera that you use, or? Oh, I have old equipment. I have a Canon 60D, and then I have a a Rebel TS. I think it is. Um. I steal my husband's camera, so I, I just kind of took over both, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, you got to let them know. You, uh, you're you taking pictures for the family it's to grow your business. Do you have, like, some of your favorite things you've taken pictures of? I know you said you have projects you want to work on, but what's some of the stuff you've done so far that's really excited you? Um, Some of my landscape has. I've won an award in college or one of my images won overall best image of the class wow um and that was exciting and fun yeah and then when i first started doing photography i was working as a assistant to a designer slash photographer mm -hmm. and he needed a editor <laughs> kind of thing yeah so I did that, and he asked me to take some pictures, and I submitted the pictures that we had took, and it won for, it got uh, published in a book. Oh, wow. So that was exciting, and that kind of started the whole photography thing. Yeah. You, so you've had pictures published in other people's work? Yes. That's awesome. That was probably really, that must have been a really cool feeling for you. Do you it really you was. Was a picture of? <laughs> Huh? Do you remember what it was a picture of? Yes. Um, it was actually a swimsuit image, and he was in a waterfall down in uh, Tucson, Arizona, where we found a neat little spot for photography. Wow. When you started working for this guy who, was, um, who needed an editor, and did you ever think about taking pictures of Spider-Man and bringing them to him? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll... I'll tell you something funny. I thought I was Spider Woman because oftentimes I'd hang from a tree or something just to get the right angle of the image I wanted. For really? <laughs> yes, what, really. Like, like gymnastic hang, like with your legs hooked behind a tree branch or something. Oh yes, I will totally climb trees and stuff just to get the image and stuff I want for art. I mean, come on now. <laughs> That's dedication right there. That's for sure. I I barely lift my arms to take a picture. That's amazing. <laughs> I think the only thing better than that that I did that literally shocked everybody is I, I'm 4'11". I'm a short little thing. Yeah. So I had to do an event, and oftentimes photographers fight for to get the best image mm -hmm. as an event when the girls are walking and stuff, whenever you got to do a showcase or something. Yeah. So since my little legs couldn't catch up, you know, I put the right kind of jeans and shoes on, and, you know, I just pull something out of the works, and I just – slide on down right past them faster than they could get and right in front of them there i am getting the angle i want <laughs> <laughs> you're just like get out of the way it's time to take some dang pictures i was like i'm not gonna be pushy i'm just gonna be sly <laughs> yeah right slide in there That's sneak right. sneaking in taking pictures That's... right being short's good <laughs> yeah it does help right it lends to what you're trying to do it's it's great that you have so many different outlets um, for your creativity. Are you, and you also, you do jewelry design as well? Yes, I was a merchant in a boutique up in Phoenix, Arizona for a while before they had closed down making uh, handmade designs. Okay, so um, handmade designs of like what kind of jewelry? All kinds, of earrings and bracelets, that kind of thing? Watches, um, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, uh, belly chains, um, all kinds of things. Is that something you still work on, or is that? Uh, slowly getting back to it. Um, 
I'm dabbling in it. I got a few things that I'm working on right now with it, but really it's if someone wants something specifically, they can contact me and I'll see what I can do. How do you go about designing? Do you just draw the like the draw the design and then have somebody else actually create it? Or are you creating the 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 chains or, or whatever it is? Like are you are you shaping the material yourself? Yep. Wow. Do you just do it? You do that all by hand? Yep, I sure do. So how do you bend gold? Gold? Well, it's not like that. I have some supplies that I can do stuff. But yeah. No. Not quite that extreme. <laughs> <laughs> I can My superwoman strength. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a very idiotic idea of what it would be to make jewelry i just imagine people bending gold bars into like golden bracelets and rings <laughs> like that's what they're doing <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's not how it works though so. not quite <laughs> but so it must be a process though right it's a long process at one point we had a uh, oh goodness i think we had 300 pieces yeah um in at least 150 pieces in two different stores in Phoenix, roughly. Wow. Is so with these these three different outlets that you have: writing, photography, and making jewelry. Is there something that you what? There ain't enough time for all of my outlets, but it's a lot more than three. <laughs> right. Well, the three that we're, we've talked about. Well, tell me, what else do you do? Everything. <laughs> Such as? Um, let's see. Um, just everything. Anything to do with photography, um, writing, crocheting, knitting, embroidery. <laughs> Every kind of creative outlet you can think of. Okay. Um, but, I mean, that's just... I had a very creative house, so that's why so many outlets. Yeah. Um, violin, guitar, I mean, just everything. So you're musically inclined as well. Mm-hmm. There's just not enough time to do each one of my crafts at the same time. <laughs> you look like one of those guys that's uh, walking down with, like, drums on his back and, like, a tuba in his mouth and, like, banging things together. Walking down the street. Goodness, we... Literally, I think I had the messiest creative house in the world <laughs> when it came to things. Our whole basement was designed for nothing but instruments and creative outlets. <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. Must have been a fun I, way to grow up. Oh, yeah. We had all kinds of creative things. If it wasn't one thing, it was another thing. And if we got bored, we'd find a new one. <laughs> so, which uh, you talked about not having enough time. Which one of these things... You know, do you feel like you spend the most, the majority of your time wanting to do? Is there one that you're just like, I have to do this or nothing else is going to get done? Definitely the writing right now is my main focus of everything else. Because I have some short stories I want to work on too. Are you, are you currently writing short stories or like you yes. have, you have basic ideas for them? Um, basic ideas. I have an outline that. Well, that writing piece isn't going to be done for a lot of years now, but um, I have an outline I'm working on for a producer friend of mine in L.A. that is doing projects now that she wants me to write the manuscript up for. Oh, cool. But that's a very long-term project that isn't going to get done in the next five years. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty awesome... Uh prospect though to have that on the table to be able to work on absolutely yeah and getting to getting to have a flow of things that you get to do on a daily basis like i know that when if writing feels stagnant for me being able to jump into something like photography like you do or like for me drawing or um music or doing something physically like being able to jump into those other flows really helps without with from going crazy <laughs> without you know better sense of the word i suppose 
It, right. it really does. And I try not to write every day now because of that, because when I was writing constantly, I used to write at least five, six poems a day. Yeah. When I was a teen, I ended up going on a 10 year writing, writing block oh, to wow. where I got stuck for a really long time and I couldn't get unstuck. So mm. I had to, I've had to learn how to manage it to where I don't go back in that severe of a writer's block again. Yeah, that's got to be terrifying. Oh, it was frustrating. And that's what started the photography is because of that writer's block. I was like, I got to try to do something different and get my mind off of it. And it'll eventually flow back. Yeah, because I feel like if it's something you really love to do, um, the taking breaks is is the healthiest thing because you really it really is it's like it's pulling it's calling you back to where it's not like a chore anymore because i know i feel like sometimes i'll i'll get in this writing schedule where it starts feeling like a chore like i have to do it exactly and it doesn't matter how much you love something in life if you feel like you have to do it you just don't want you just naturally you're like i don't want to do this now cuz i feel like i have to do it so yeah like, that's that's i think one of the healthiest things you can do as an artist um is allowing yourself that that recuperation time it's it's pretty important i think that and having downtime and not focusing so much on work or feeling forced i mean you just kind of take step back steps back sometimes and that's why i take a uh, steps back from my editing thing for so long sometimes because you kind of don't look at it the same when you're stressed out about it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. When you get some perspective, right? Absolutely. That's very cool. I want to, um, I want to, I want to, so you have your book with you, correct? Yep, I'm looking at it right now. Well, I don't have a hard copy yet, but I'm looking at the ebook right yeah, now. You know, okay, do you have a favorite poem or uh, something picked out that you'd like to read for us? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Awesome. Very excited. I can't sing. That's not one of my talents. Me neither. Singing's hard. Unless people... you want to go completely deaf, it's not a talent. <laughs> I should have asked you to sing for me. No. Oh, no, 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 no. We ain't going to be playing that game. <laughs> you can have a singing competition after you read your poem. No, we'll unless sing our, you want to our favorite song. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. All right, you ready? Yes, this one is titled, uh, The Girl. Okay. With tears that flew by the side of her cheeks, that overly sweet little girl that got beat down was made to stand alone in a dark world. She stood in the dark as many doubted her. She could feel the doubt as they stared at her. She felt the pain of losing her sweetness that turned into nothing more than strength. The day that she gained strength, she gained her confidence. She gained the ability to bury her sweet, innocent side for it to only come out when she was not paying attention. Why does it creep out? Because being strong is not natural. Being sweet is the truest, truest part of her soul. That's one of my favorites. Oh, so what, what was that about to you? Um, that was written when I was very young. And I wrote that because I had really bad anxiety and it was kind of hard to talk in crowds and stuff like this conversation would not be happening. <laughs> like awesome. my hair would be in my face and I'd be running away. Like, no, it would not be happening. <laughs> yeah. And I guess um, talking about not being strong, but being sweet. Was mm -hmm. that your way of uh, portraying yourself as like, just too delicate to be in, around other people or like be seen by other people yeah mm -hmm. that's very interesting and I, it's amazing you wrote that when you were how old you said you started writing when you were 12 but was that like a that was written around that time 12 or 13 wow that's amazing you, you're different now though you're not um, like you, i mean you're obviously you're able to do this well, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. You know, okay. it's it's not easy. However, um, when you have a smaller version of you that is a lot like you yeah. 
and you're trying to make them push through it, you know, you kind of don't have a choice but to um, but to change and kind of think, you know, I can't expect them to push through if I can't push through because I have to set the example first. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's amazing how kids make us grow like that, right? He does more than that. He's my most challenging thing in this world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're great I, teachers. They don't even know it. They're these wonderful little teachers. They really are, and he crack he he's he cracks me up because he's very comical. But he, he's he's getting there. <laughs> he's getting there. He's too much like his mama. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's great though that you're that you're able to see that you know a lot of people want to tell others how to live but i mean you're you're doing things necessary for yourself to grow so that you can be an example like a lot of i mean i know for a long time for me like i just wanted to tell my kids how to be without being the example like i used to be a personal trainer too and one of my things was i had to be a certain i had to live by the principles that i was preaching otherwise it was all garbage right it's like what am i what am i doing if i'm not living the example um, because it, it's just like poetry. It's not authentic. You know, mm -hmm. and if it's not authentic, if it doesn't ring true, then people aren't going to, people aren't going to be able to connect with it and it loses a lot of its meaning. Um, yeah. so I'm proud of you for pushing yourself and getting out there and doing stuff like this. That's obviously nerve wracking and terrifying on top of it having a, a an alarm go off <laughs> where random things are going to happen and you don't know and i just and i didn't tell you about this before the interview no you didn't <laughs> so i mean and, and you did amazing right and i think it's a it's a it's a crucial part to understanding that it's okay to be vulnerable and that's what poetry is great for that it's about being vulnerable and realizing that vulnerability does not equal death for us it's like yes <laughs> right i mean i struggle with anxiety for a long time like getting up in front of people and talking used to make me cry like close my throat up heart would beat out of my chest and i'd start crying for whatever reason that anxiety that just is unexplainable until i realize like it's okay you're not gonna die this is you know it just is something it's just an experience and being able to experience life in that way is freeing it, it really is, and I, I'll tell you, it, it's it's kind of funny because you really don't know how people don't know you that have been in your life all your life until you do something like this and you publish a book, and they're like, "I had no idea yeah. <laughs> like that. I had no idea that you could have the courage to do this," and I'm shocked. And it, it's shocking to a lot of people that did know me then that haven't seen me in recent years because. They're probably thinking I'm still that shy little, you know, hiding behind my hair person. And it's like, no, I'm vibrant now. Now I'm full of energy. So now you're all are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you're in trouble. That's right. Was there something that happened that got you that? I mean, was it having your, your son or was it something else? It was like, all right, Stephanie, it's time to step out of the shadow. We need to move and live life and stop being, you know, stop living in fear. You know, it was. Um, it was a big portion of my son, but um, like I said, I had a very creative family too, and they're all still really brilliant and creative, but I I kind of watched them as I grew up, mm -hmm. you know, have all these amazing gifts and these talents and could do things other people couldn't do, and none of them ever, like, took that step to do anything with it. They just kind of mm -hmm. kept it in their own private world and didn't share it with anybody, and it's like why you're so incredibly talented share it with people let them know who you are and they never had that courage to really step out of that comfort to do it so do they look at you now or have you inspired any of them to take a step um i don't know if i've inspired any of them maybe shocked them but inspired them <laughs> i don't know about. like what the heck it's not what we do in this family. <laughs> don't, don't you step out. 
I, I think they're more like we didn't know she had so much to say kind of terrified part still. <laughs> oh. But um, my some of my cousins and my family have said they're really proud of me and, you know, have asked me, you know, how did you get past that awkward point? And I mean, honestly, it's just. I think life has to hit you the right way for you to wake up sometimes to realize that there's got to be a change in the way that you think if you want things to go a different direction. Yeah. And was, I had enough of those slaps in the face. <laughs> that was profound. Absolutely. It's a hundred percent, a hundred percent right. Yeah. Life does have to hit you a certain way sometimes for you to wake up. And once you do, it's it's just a responsibility of taking action and not wasting it, right? Absolutely. I mean, you just got to, I mean, it's kind of like what they always say. You got to grab life by the horns and just kind of hold on tight and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy the ride. That's what we're here That's for. Sweet. I feel like if, if we're not enjoying life, then we're doing it wrong. <laughs> because. Because it really is it's something to be, I feel like it's something to be enjoyed. And if it's not there for you yet, it's, you know, work till it gets there. And then just just enjoy it. Are you are you enjoying the success of publishing a book and doing your art and having your family and all this kind of stuff? I really am. And um, I had quit doing art there for a little bit. And I realized, you know, when I quit doing it, how much it's a necessity. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if you love it, you know, you can't quit it. You got to keep doing it because it's kind of what gives you peace of mind when all the other chaos is going on that you're dealing with. Absolutely. I mean, that's why adult coloring books are so popular. Like people forget how much they love to be, even though it's a little bit of creativity. It's not, you know, I mean, it's coloring and whatever inside the lines. It's still creativity to where we can focus our mind on something other than ourselves for a moment. And like... Mm -hmm get our creativity out but those things are so popular you know and like these sudoku is another form i think of uh mathematic art and there's so many different forms that we don't even realize that like we need these we need these things as adults it's like we don't we we don't have to stop playing stop doing the things that we love just because we grow up and like now it's time to be a boring human being it's like <laughs> no now's the time to amplify the things we did as children you know yeah, and it's kind of funny because when you look at your own kids and you're like, quit being a smart aleck or they're doing something that's entirely creative, but it's driving you nuts. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I mean, we kind of forget about that type of imagination as we get older. Yeah, because, yeah, I know it becomes a nuisance to us almost because we're like, I'm trying to do something super important. Don't you understand? <laughs> Don't you understand what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah, try try yelling like at mine. If I tell mine to stop, he'll just continue to do it like a pest and then make comical faces at you like, yeah, no, 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 no. Like, okay, I'm trying not to die laughing as I'm telling you to stop. <laughs> yeah, children remind us of us, of our humanity and where we can do better. That's that's a good thing. That's, uh, so... Um, Last last question here. I want to thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show, Stephanie. Um, it's been a pleasure having you. I do want to know, do you have any last, uh, I don't want to say last words, but do you have, oh my God, I just spit all over. Do you have anything you want to leave the writing community with? <laughs> just like spit all over the place on my computer. Um, writing is a whole lot of honesty. There's nothing that we write that doesn't have a piece of us in it that, uh, Keep being honest, and the more honest you'll be, I mean, everything will flow in time the way it's supposed to. Beautiful. Poetry. Poetry in motion. Stephanie, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, I'll put links to your, your book in the description in the video. Um, thanks again, and we'll talk to you later, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?